We begin in Washington, D.C., where for the first time in a century, the House adjourned without a speaker on the first day. On Tuesday, Kevin McCarthy failed to win the speakership on three separate occasions. Joe Khalil joins us live from the nation's capital with everything we're learning this morning. Good morning, Joe. Yeah, good morning, Mitch. So look, the calendar says that we are in the second day of the new Congress, but the reality is we woke up without a Speaker of the House. And so effectively, we woke up without a functioning Congress. The House cannot be even seated until we get this speakership thing sorted out. We haven't been able to say that in a hundred years, but here we are. So Congress, uh, the House is going to pick up again at noon today where they left off yesterday trying to elect a Speaker. And for Kevin McCarthy, his speakership bid seemed inevitable even a couple of days ago. But right now, even his allies will tell you, it is slipping away fast. After three consecutive votes yesterday, where he failed to get the necessary 218 members to support him. So look, you've got this group of 20 Republicans that voted against him. Uh, I've had conversations with allies of McCarthy. Many of them are concerned that there's just no reaching this group and trying to convince them to support McCarthy at this point. Some say it's personal. Some don't like McCarthy. They say they don't trust him. Uh, some, you know, got into Congress by challenging other Republicans for their seats. And so McCarthy actually campaigned against them and they haven't forgotten it. Others say that they're, you know, making this list of demands that McCarthy is not meeting fully. He has compromised quite a bit, but there are still certain things. They want to make it much easier to be able to dismiss a Speaker of the House. They want to uh, put term limits on members of Congress. Those are just two of the many demands that they are making. So again, in my conversations with some of McCarthy's allies, they're just not sure how you get some of these 16 to 20 people to you know, have a change of heart and vote for him. And they may be stuck at this point. Uh, McCarthy, for his part, says he is going to stick it out. He and his allies say, for however many votes it takes, they are not going to back down. The question is, does the rest of the GOP conference feel the same way, or do they start to talk about coalescing around someone else, potentially, as Steve Scalise, uh, or, or someone else who can garner those 218 votes? Mitch, that is what we're going to find out uh, relatively soon here, I think. And those are, again, according to my sources, the conversations that are being had right now do you go with someone else or do you stick it out because you got these sort of two immovable forces these 20 republicans that say they're not going to vote for mccarthy and then again mccarthy saying he's in it for however many votes it takes joe it was really striking to me yesterday between the first and the second vote jim jordan nominated uh mccarthy himself and said he didn't want to be yeah. speaker and then matt gates got up and nominated jim jordan and said we should have somebody who doesn't want to be speaker be the speaker and lauren Boebert said something very similar she's another one of those holdouts meanwhile mccarthy's vote count continued to go down and down and down so uh, it doesn't look like we're headed for a, a quick and easy end to this, but what are the consequences uh, as we move on like this for the American public? You said we can't seat Congress. We can't have a House of Representatives functioning. What does that mean for the American people? Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And it is hard at this point to see a path out. And that's even what I'm hearing from you know my sources, too, is that a lot of them are uncertain about how this plays out. But you know, to your question, Mitch, Every single day that this delay continues and Congress is not seated, that means you have really important committees that can't be seated, that can't start their work, committees that oversee things like uh, health and the military and commerce and veterans and all of the important things that Congress takes on. That work cannot begin. We heard yesterday from one a member of Congress who sits on the Intelligence Committee in the previous Congress, and he says, you know, it's not like their work has to stop. The intelligence communities they have to continue, but there's no oversight. There is no congressional committee to you know, do that work from this building. So those are real world consequences that we are gonna see. And that problem, that dilemma is gonna continue every single day until we get a speaker, until they can seat this new Congress. We are basically in a House of Representatives that does not function, Mitch. Yeah, and all those investigations that uh, McCarthy wanted to start, uh, they're on hold, too. So that's Joe right. Khalil reporting from D.C. Joe, thank you. I know we're going to hear a lot more about this story. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation in your cable lineup. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-based, unbiased coverage.